Hello there, Eggs here and welcome to my channel. On this video, I would like to share a beginner's guide for creators who are planning to post their comic on Webtoon. Now, to some of you watching this video who have already published your comics in Webtoon, you should already know that posting on Webtoon Canvas is a really straightforward process. However, to those viewers who haven't published their comics in Webtoon Canvas yet, here are some things that you need to consider before hitting the publish button on webtoon canvas number one buffer buffer is basically just making advanced pages or chapters for your comic so that if you post your first chapter on webtoon today you will already have your second chapter prepared for the next upload schedule thus giving you more breathing time and time for the rest of your chapters trust me when i say this that when you feel so excited on posting on webtoon you will feel the sensation that will make you think Buffer is for the weak I am not a weak In fact, because of how excited I was last year I can remember this feeling of taking a leap of faith Fingers crossed, I published my first chapter and it's the only chapter that I have created yet So long story short, without any buffers I had a hard time being on track with my schedule My weekly post became a bi-weekly post and I stopped posting for 3 months because of some unforeseen events and my hectic schedule. So if you're still in the process of making your own comic, having a buffer is definitely a good idea. At least 2 to 5 chapters depending on how you assess your schedule. Are you dedicating yourself on this full time or will this just be a side hassle? Number 2. Art Style Wow, you're amazing! Your colors on this chapter are solid, man. Your line art's brilliant. Oh, you even put some complex shadows, highlights, and high-def backgrounds on it. But I would like to ask you this question. Can you make this art style consistent without breaking your weekly schedule? How many panels in a week can you make if you have to use this kind of art style? And this is a sincere question. Also, one thing to consider with sticking on your art style is that are you alone in this webtoon endeavor or do you have a team? As a webtoon reader, I'm always amazed about how Yunji Park created God of High School with such impact on art spread, you know, and how some of those webtoon original artists created those chapters with such finesse, let alone their storytelling. But did you know that some of the webtoon comics out there had some help with the coloring? or some hired to do the backgrounds for them just like in the manga industry. So, for me, since I'm the only one that's doing the writing, I'm the only one that's doing the art, then I decided to make the art style of my webcomic simple. Number 3. The value of your story. Ask yourself this question. Why do you want to share your comic to everyone across the globe? Answering this question helps you understand how dedicated are you going to be in completing your own story. Being on time on your weekly schedule is difficult for some of us, but being inspired to continue your story is another thing. If you don't quite understand the value that you are bringing to readers when you publish on a platform, chances are you will be posting blindly without considering the well-being of your potential audience or perhaps giving up just because you got discouraged that nobody is reading your comic, especially that the canvas section is really tough. So if you want to post your comic on a comedy genre, do you see your comic making people smile and laugh in times when they are sad or in need of laughter? If your story is about romance, do you see the readers relieve the excitement of having butterflies in their stomachs? Do you want to influence your readers with life-changing values? What will your story truly bring? Do you want to excite your readers and throw fire on their passion in cooking, adventure, or whatever aspect of life? Knowing what value that your story brings to your readers will help you know how much you really want to put it out there for people to read. Number 4. Your market. What kind of readers are you looking for? When you join a tech startup competition, looking for a specific market is really important since by truly knowing your market, you will understand what kind of things do they really want to read. What do they need on a fantasy comic? Is your concept already being used in a lot of series and will get your readers bored because of the cliché it brings? For me, 
I've been always so inspired by adventure stories like One Piece and action-packed series like Naruto and God of High School. So right when I published my webtoon, I already knew what kind of readers I want to reach out to. And those are the readers that somehow have the same genre interest as me. Number 5. Schedule Will you be updating every Saturdays, Sundays, or Mondays? If that is the case, then you will want to start to publish your comic on that day, so that the readers will know when your new chapters are coming. If you break your schedule, chances are, your readers will get confused if you stop posting and you will give an impression that you have gone hiatus or just quit posting on the platform. Number 6. Your chapter or episode's vertical page length. If you are aiming to be eligible with the ad revenue program, you will want more page views on every chapter that you have. Also, to be able to count readers' visits as a page view with Webtoon's ads partners, you should make your chapters long enough that the scrolling of the readers will be able to show ads once you are eligible for the ad revenue program. More details are explained extensively on ad revenue sharing Discover More video of Webtoon. I will link it down in the description below. Number 7. Review your dialogues. You have to make sure that the readers can understand what your characters are trying to say. What I usually do in this step is that I ask some friends to read my comics before posting it and ask them about what they understood about the chapter. With this, I can be confident that I have properly expressed the thoughts and voices of my characters that the readers can comprehend them properly. Number 8. Just do it. If you're afraid that your art is not good enough but still want to share your comic, just do it. If you're afraid that your storytelling is not good enough but still want to share your comic, just do it. Posting your comic to thousands of readers is the only way to go. First-hand experience will not let you down. Imagine, there are two kinds of aspiring comic artists out there. The first artist had this rough idea and took every action necessary to make his idea into reality. He improves it until he had something tangible or visible that he can now share to everybody. And the other artist had this really good idea, but is afraid that he's not yet good enough as an artist. So years passed by, there comes this new anime adaptation of a famous comic series that is just the same with his idea. Or worst case, his idea will never see the light of day in his generation. Now, who will have the most feedback? Who will have improved their muscle memory on strokes better? Who will have compared their past works on their current work more often? Who will have seen more improvement in a short amount of time? Those who just grabbed their pens and enthusiastically draw right away and kept on drawing wisely despite their mistakes will surely improve at a higher rate compared to those afraid to share their artwork. So that's all of it. And if you want to check my webtoon canvas, The Grand Circle, I will post the link on the description down below. Don't forget to comment if you have more tips in mind so that it will help other creators as well in their journey on posting their webtoon canvas series in the future. I will be posting more videos to come, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for listening and see you on the next video.